future of linguistics and the futuristics field in Pakistan? Well, controversial subject question, of course, my own feeling is pretty much what I tried to describe. I think there's a future for linguistics as quite a new field, a field that for the first time is able to provide genuine explanations for the basic phenomena of language instead of describing them, which is hard enough. Gave a couple of examples. There are many more. If that can be carried through, it's a major breakthrough for the future. Uh, you can't predict the future of science, so we don't know. But that's my personal opinion. Uh, us see the future differently. What about the future in Pakistan? Well, simple answer to that depends on Pakistani linguists, and other linguists who are interested in studying Urdu, other native languages of Pakistan, or who are interested, but uh, for the future of the linguistic field as a general field, it'll depend on developments within Pakistan in Pakistani universities and research centers. Many things changed in the last 70 years. What new parameters must we take into consideration for effective language teaching? Uh, first of all, 70 years ago, there were no parameters. The assumption in structural linguistics uh, explicitly was stated over and over was that any languages can vary virtually without limits and each individual language must have to be studied in its own terms with no uh, uh, assumptions about other languages. That was in the mid 1950s, the basic doctrine. It was sometimes called the Boazian doctrine, rightly or wrongly. Well, that that was that's very far from true. I should say that something similar was believed in biology at about the same time. It was assumed that organisms vary virtually without limit. Each one has to be studied on its own. In biology, that's now known to be completely false. In fact, there are very narrow constraints on possible organisms, so narrow that some have even speculated that there's a universal genome and the uh, apparent variety of organisms is just superficial working out of some of the possibilities fixed, determined by the fixed form for organisms. I think something along those lines has uh, uh, happened with regard to uh, uh, our concept knowledge of language. About 40 years ago, there was an innovation in linguistic theory suggesting that the basic theory in our minds, it has fixed unchanging principles, like some of those I discussed, and parametric variation, a set of parameters. So that would mean that language acquisition is kind of like a question answering game. The infant asks for each parameter, is it set this way or that way? Is it set as a null subject language like Spanish or like a language that requires an explicit subject like English? The yes or no question can be answered with a very small amount of data. Does the language have verb preceding object? like English and Spanish, or does it have verb following object like Japanese and many others? Again, answerable on a small number of evidence. We now have recent work of the kind I mentioned, like Ian Roberts, which shows how the infant can work through the system of parameters uh, very, uh, very uh, efficiently to fix on the exact language. If you want to look at the what look like the plausible set of parameters, the best work I know is by 
Ian Roberts and by uh, Giuseppe Longobardi, teaches at York University in England, has done extensive work on the variety of possible parameters and what they tell us about the history of linguistics. That's a new topic that he's innovated and it tells us quite a lot. You can get much deeper knowledge of the, uh, the uh, relationships among languages at a much deeper level if you look at shared 